The families of two women who were killed as a result of domestic violence have teamed up in a special way, and I had a chance to meet with them. This weekend, we hear their story of hope and friendship and their goal of improving relationships. These five people are all family. It's not a family they wanted. Shelley and Nick Beasel started Love Conquers Violence in memory of his sister, Natalie, killed by her boyfriend eight years ago in a murder-suicide. Lissa Weimelt and Bill Pugh started Maria's Voice after their daughter Maria was murdered by her husband in Maple Grove three years ago. Really, um, we're just turning this negative into more of like this positive of what does a healthy relationship look like? We really chose to take the high road and uh, to, to be optimistic. That road led the families to this. A coloring book. It tells the story of Rocky, Maria's dog. Rocky's really a good friend, you know, and he uh, talks to his friends every day in really positive ways. He's a clear communicator. It also features a dog named Bo. Both Maria and Natalie had dogs named Bo when they were younger. The story is about jealousy and how to deal with it. Kids see this in their household, in their family, and they've, they've been around it, and don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. And this coloring book, as simple as it is, is a good way to educate them on that. I think Maria would just be so proud of her dog, Rocky. A legacy of hope after so much loss. She loved him and she would have just had such a blast to see him kind of taking, you know, having his debut and being a leader for preventing domestic abuse, but really have being that connector for kids and for everyone in the community. By telling a story in living color. We can have great behaviors and be good friends and good spouses and good buddies, and we can do that starting from children. So I think it's a really hopeful way to use Rocky. The book will be available at all public events involving the two nonprofits, and sometimes Rocky is there too. Voters in the Osseo School District could see a $225 million bonding referendum on the ballot this fall. Officials say bonding would fund classrooms, safety, and infrastructure improvements across the district. $61 million would go to building a new elementary school in northwestern Maple Grove. Supporters say the funding is a long time coming, while others are skeptical of the need for another school. You know, this need um, is really to provide necessary classroom space to reduce class sizes and meet the growing um, enrollment challenges that are coming. I still have questions about the need and the fairness of the new school, um, on one, on taxpayers. Um, it's really hard to go referendum one after the next and the next year um, when taxpayers are worried about inflation and property taxes increasing. The school board expects to vote on the proposal sometime in May. You may not be seeing as many home for sale signs as in years past, and ones that are on the market are selling fast. One Maple Grove homeowner sold her house in just a few days. They talked about the, the um, first weekend putting the house on the market on Thursday, and by Sunday they hoped to, it would be sold, and I was very surprised. And uh, that's kind of how things played out by Sunday. We had multiple offers, and it was very exciting. Jennifer Buring received eight offers in that short amount of time. Listed at $400,000, her four-bed, three-bath home sold for considerably more. Realtor Michael Doyle says the inventory shortage remains a struggle, particularly for first-time home buyers. It's still tough for the first-time home buyers because there's just a lack of good quality inventory. And we're seeing about a third of buyers now actually purchasing new construction. It's uh, because they just cannot find a suitable existing home to buy. Another challenge, potential sellers are locked into lower interest rates, making it less enticing to put their homes in the market, contributing to that inventory shortage. Rather than trying to find a new home, some homeowners are staying put and remodeling. If that's the case for you, there's no shortage of ideas you can find on the MSP Home Tour. As Corey Bork reports, a home in Plymouth may serve as a source of inspiration. My house gives me a feeling of zen. Inside this Plymouth home. It's pretty exciting. Jennifer Robinson recently completed an extensive remodel. It is lacking clutter. It is wide open, colorful, bright, sunny, full of functional storage space. I'm just in heaven. It wasn't always that way. So the wall ran from right here 
down to the end of the counter. So the kitchen was very dark, narrow. A wall had divided the kitchen. A drop ceiling added to the darkened mood. So dark, in fact, her sister felt sorry for her. My sister actually showed up one Christmas, asked for my Target card, and bought me a whole bunch of lamps. So now the ceiling is elevated with all of these beautiful can lights. It's completely open and functional. So I've got pull-outs throughout the entire kitchen. One of the first things you're going to see actually are those brilliant hand-blown pendant lights. Jennifer teamed up with Mac Miller Design and Build after winning a silent auction. The favorite thing I do in a home is, is select the color scheme. It turned out to be the perfect match. Remodeling is where we can take what we currently have, our homes, and make them fit our needs. Beatrice Owen with the National Association of the remodeling industry of Minnesota says it's important for those considering a project to ask the hard questions. Be prepared to work with your contractor remodeler and be specific about how much it's going to cost, how long it's going to take, and what you can do as, as the homeowner in the process. It was an investment in future value. For Jennifer, her remodel didn't stop with the kitchen. This is a custom built mantle. The basement also completely redone. If you look behind this beautiful tile, it was brick. Her words of advice for others? Working with both an architect and an interior designer is worth its weight in gold. In Plymouth. I consider this my retirement home. I plan to be here for the next 20 years. Corey Bork, CCX News. They've been friends and teammates since they were nine years old. In this week's CCX Sports Spotlight, we meet three Maple Grove seniors. We'll extend their time together on the baseball diamond for another four years. Tanner Allback, Hunter Gerber, and Sam Kleiber are good friends. Longtime friends, in fact. Part of a large senior group of players at Maple Grove Baseball this spring. When neither Gerber or Kleiber are pitching, the trio make up three quarters of the Crimson starting infield. Albeck at third, Gerber at first, and Kleiber at short. All are talented and different in their own way. Gerber is kind of the, he's kind of the loud one of the bunch. Uh, he's very vocal, uh, funny. Tanner, he's more quiet, but he's, he's honestly one of the most intense, hardworking individuals I've probably ever coached. And Sam, Sam kind of brings it all together, and I think he's kind of a quiet leader on the field. He leads by example. Definitely been looking forward to it for a long time. It's honestly surreal that we're here because it feels like, I know it sounds corny, but it does feel like just yesterday we were sophomores out here, 16 years old playing, so it's crazy that's our last uh, last ride and last year together. Albeck and Gerber were starters a year ago when the Crimson won Section 5 4A and finished fourth in the state tournament. Kyber missed all but two innings of the season with a leg injury. For me personally, it is nice just coming back because baseball has always been my favorite sport and last year just having such a good run we had and not being able to contribute on the field, that part kind of sucked for me, but I took away a lot from last year. The three will each continue their baseball careers next year at Minnesota Duluth. But they didn't plan it this way. We all took our visits at different times. I think Gary went up there first and he liked it a lot. But I, I would say the um, main thing is we didn't really choose there based off of each other. Obviously that's a little bit of a factor, but we all like the coaching staff and UMD. It's going to be pr pretty fun up there next year. So We all kind of were just taking our own paths. and. Um, I, Hunter was the first one who ended up committing there, and then mine was kind of a later recruiting process because I missed last year. Though baseball is their preferred sport, the guys admit it will be tough to top last fall. All three were starters for Maple Grove's 13-0 Class 6A winning state championship football team. Yeah, John, football was good. Uh, there's no better way to end it really than that, and um, it's what we've been working for for a long time, and it was really great to achieve it. I mean, I don't think anything will ever really top that state state championship run that we had. So, I mean, I still miss the team to this day and just being at practice with everyone. Just winning state this year, getting ending that on a high note, it'd be really cool to do that in two sports. It was Sam, Hunter, and Tanner, I mean, obviously had unbelievable football careers for us and are gonna be part of a legacy a long time going. They were three-year starters in baseball. They never missed a workout for football. They were always there every step of the way, good students, good kids, and, and and kind of exemplified just kind of what being a winner and being a champion was. Crimson head baseball coach Jeff Peterson loves that so many of his players aren't just baseball only athletes. 
Uh, coaching multi-sport players is my favorite thing. Uh, when I went to high school, I played three sports. I just think it just makes you a, a better baseball player, in my opinion. I think it makes you a better football player, too. I mean, if you just that varsity experience you bring from another sport to another sport it helps you. You've been in the crunch time situations, you've been in tight games, you've been in crucial spots. It's definitely a younger Maple Grove team on the diamond this spring. But the senior leaders believe their team will mature and contend again come playoff time. This team's going to be a little bit different than last year's. We're going to take things slow, kind of, but I feel like when it clicks for this team, we're going to get it done. The Crimson do have time to get ready for the postseason next month, but it's definitely been a slow start for the team. Maple Grove is 1-5 and five so far. They play at Champlin Park on Monday. For the CCX Sports Spotlight, I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.